I want to thank everyone for stopping in tonight. If you've never been to Pike Creek Farm, thank you for stopping. And if you like canning and cooking recipes and baking, then, you know, subscribe to my channel. I hope that you will enjoy the content. And if you've been here before and are stopping back, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So tonight we're doing a what's for dinner and it is a spaghetti casserole and it is not spaghetti. It's a pizza casserole. Excuse me. It's called pizza casserole. And I'm going to follow the recipe pretty close, but you can doctor this up and add your own personal things. Like it doesn't have mushrooms, but I think it'd be good with mushrooms in it. Um, any toppings that you would put on pizza basically. So, and this is one of the recipes from the, um, Ziploc bag that I have that has all the vintage recipes from back from the 70s and 80s and whenever. And this recipe was actually a recipe from a co-worker and it's at least about 20 years old. And she had it for, we had a party at her house and she made it and I loved it and she shared the recipe with me. And here is the recipe. I will put everything down below. As you can see, my kids when they were younger, wrote on this recipe. <laughs> I don't know who was practicing their letters, but it looks like a clock maybe there. So they are now in their 20s and 30s, so it's it's an old recipe. The recipe calls for a pound and a half of hamburger. I browned up two pounds of venison. Um, that's what I had in the house, and I didn't have like a pound and a half, so I figured half a pound of meat is just gonna make it better for Jim. He will like that more. And it calls for onion, and I am using some dehydrated onion that I'm rehydrating, a packet of spaghetti sauce mix, oregano leaves. It calls for clove of garlic, and I didn't have any fresh garlic. I used it for canning, so I'm gonna use this roasted garlic seasoning. I have tomato sauce, and there are, I have them hidden up here, in the cabinet, but there are some red peppers to go along with it. And you can add hot sauce if you would like to. So you mix all that up and you put it in nine by 13, and then you sprinkle it with a shredded cheese. I have shredded eight ounces of mozzarella cheese. After you put the cheese, there is like a batter that you make that has butter. They said margarine, I use butter, eggs, some oil, milk, and flour. So we would mix that up and pour it on top, and then you sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese before you put it in to bake. So that's what we're gonna make tonight for dinner, and since it's a nine by 13, there will be quite a bit of leftovers. The recipe um, calls for the brown meat drained, so I have that done. And now we stir in a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. Um, a cup of chopped onion. I am using dehydrated that I rehydrated in some water. It calls for one cup of chopped green pepper. I hid it up here from the dog. <laughs> I have red pepper in the house, so that is what I'm using. That's one red pepper. And then a half a cup of water. And a packet of spaghetti sauce mix. Since I use two pounds of meat instead of one, I might need to add some extra liquid to this. In fact, I'm gonna add the water from the onions. It calls for one teaspoon of crushed oregano, and I'm just going to do it this way. It's a good idea when you add dry spi spices like that to rub them up a little and activate the oils in them. And then it called for one clove of 
garlic, which I'm out of fresh garlic. I used it with canning pickles, so I am gonna just put about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half of this garlic seasoning from. So let's mix this up and see, let me pull you closer. Get the other ingredients out of the way. Okay, let's mix this up. And it's not supposed to be really saucy, but I'm thinking that I might need to add a little bit more, possibly. Okay, it smells good. The spices from the mix and the ones we added in. I think mushrooms would be good in this. I am going to put some water in this and add a little bit of extra water. It's about a quarter cup of water. Let's mix it up. good. Now since the meat, the meat's already cooked, so we just got to heat this all up again. It says to bring it to a boil. Okay, it is boiling now and everything is heated up. As I was stirring this up, I thought, well, I thought mushrooms would be good, but I also thought my husband likes olives and he on pizza, and that would be good in here too. So we sprinkle the cheese on top of the meat. need the milk, the eggs, the butter, and when you melt the butter, let it cool before you add it into this mixture. You don't want to cook the eggs. So we mix this for one minute on medium speed. And now we add one cup of flour. I'm doing two half cups, so so one cup of flour, and then we mix it for one minute. So I'm gonna, excuse me, two minutes. So I'm gonna beat this for two minutes and speed it up for you. I poured the batter over the top. I thought the camera was on and it wasn't. It's been a long day. And then I sprinkled a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. It might have been a little bit more. It was what was left in the container. So I just sprinkled that on top. You can see that. And now I am going to put it in the oven. This batter makes kind of like a puffy crust on the top and real cheesy when you cut into it. So. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 400 for 30 minutes and I'll bring you back when it's done.
It just went off and I just took it out of the oven. As you can see the top gets kind of crusty. It's boiling. So I am going to let this cool before I cut into it. But it smells really good and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, going to serve up And I did loosen around the edges. It didn't say to spray the pan, but I think it would help. So here it is, still pretty hot. The top is kind of crunchy, and but then it's kind of fluffy underneath. Here's a bite, let's give it a try. Hot. <laughs> it's hot, but it's cheesy and pizza-like tasting, and I'll put the recipe down below. If you like this video, push the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel because I keep doing these vintage-type recipes and canning and baking and life here on Pike Creek Farm. Thank you very much for stopping by today. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you again soon.